up YouTube you tube. Mr. Kane coming at you live from the studio. Here are the questions for the day. Please pause the video now and answer them. Next, so some review. Remember, solid molecules are very rigid, so they don't move very much, and they're packed very tightly. Liquid molecules are in between, so they move a bit, and then gas molecules are fast and they spread out. So we're going to be using that knowledge today. Today, you're going to be able to explain why hot air rises. And you're going to be taking notes. So go to Thursday Density Notes and pull it up. And I'm going to be going over the answers, yeah, as we go through the video. OK. So hot air does rise. That is the idea behind hot air balloons. Or if you've ever slept on a bunk bed, I did, and the top bunk is usually hotter because the hot air in the room will end up going towards the ceiling. So this sister is going to be a lot hotter than her brother. Yep, and that sucks because I don't like it when it's super hot when it's when I'm trying to sleep. See, so yeah, I aim for the bottom bunk, and that's also how hot air balloons work. When you heat up the hot air, the balloon goes up, but when you take away the heat, the balloon goes back down. So you're going to learn how does that work today. Here's some review from the test. So we have two different molecules, A and B, but you should notice, this is, was also on the test, when the molecules went from A to B, they gained energy and they started getting faster. And when molecules move faster, the temperature is hotter. And here's some review. So remember, gas molecules are more spread out. Liquid, liquid is in between and solid are very compact. Let's try and think which one is moving the fastest. You should say gas. So which one is the hottest out of those three? Remember, if it's moving fast, it should be the hottest. So that's gas. And here's the new word for today, density. Density, the scientific definition is how much mass there is over how much volume there is. The formula is density equals mass, which is like your weight over volume. I'll go over what volume is in a sec. You can think of it this way too. If these red atoms are mass and the blue is space is the volume, then the one on the left is more dense because there's more mass in the less amount of space. So the number, there's more mass, less volume, so that'll make it more dense than this one on the right. Another way to think about it, or another way to tell the difference between the two, is density can also be thought of how condensed, like how packed together something is. So condensed is another word for like packed together, whereas less dense is like spread out. So if you see atoms that are really spread out, not dense, atoms very packed together, more dense. That's another way that can help too. And then volume, volume is a new word. I want you to think of volume as how much space there is. Another word for volume could be size but for 3D objects. So for example, the volume goes up in the jars. So less volume, more volume. The volume goes up as you go from left to right. Next, I want you to compare these two jars. Which one is more dense? Try and pause the video now and think about it. Which one is more dense? Did you notice? <clears throat> More mass and less volume goes more dense, so it's more compact. Both jars have the same amount of mass because they both have 10 of those red atoms, but the jar on the left is smaller, so it's more dense because it's more compact. Those little atoms are tighter packed together, and you can also use the formula to do it too. If you think both of them have the same mass of 10, but the one on the left, its volume is 5, so the density would be 2. But the volume on the right, its mass is 10, but the volume is 10, so the density would be 1. So this jar is about twice as dense as this one. You would be doing more of that in physics. Okay, so which jar is more likely to float? Which jar is more likely to float? This is some review from last week. If the one on the left is more dense, the one on the right is less dense or more spread out, which one's going to float? 
you should realize more dense, sink, less dense, float. Okay? Now we're going to talk about sports. Remember, density is how much mass there is per volume. So let's say a tennis ball and a baseball are around the same size. So they both have the same volume, but baseballs are heavier. So which one is going to be more dense, the baseball or the tennis ball? Both same size, but the baseball is heavier, so it has more mass. Which one's going to be more dense? Pause video now and think about it. Next, baseballs are heavier and the same size as tennis balls, so that they, the baseballs, these are more dense. So which one is more likely to sink? If I hit a tennis ball and then a baseball into a pond, which one is going to sink to the bottom? Think about it. Remember, hint. In your notes, how do you determine something will float or sink? Remember, more dense equals sinks, less dense equals floats. Okay. Only help I'm going to give. Next, how can you determine if something will float? You don't need to have water in your answer. You don't need to use water to see if something will float or sink, but you should use density in your answer. Okay. Next, we have hot water and we have cold water. Which one of these is more dense? Hint, look at the water molecules in my picture. Which one, which one is more dense, the hot water or the cold water? You should have noticed, if you look at the cold water, those water molecules are more compact. So that one is more dense because it's heavier and less space. Less dense is lighter and more space. Both the hot and cold water, they have like around the same size, but if you look closely, you'll see that the cold water has more molecules in there. So the cold water is heavier, so that will be more dense because the water molecules are more compact. Okay. So if the cold water is more dense, which one will sink if I pour both of them in the same glass? So I pour the hot water and cold water together. Which one is going to sink to the bottom? Okay. Think about it. Remember, how does density affect floating or sinking? Now, it's the same thing with molecules. Solid, liquid, and gas. Which one of these is the most dense? And then on your notes, write down which one is the least dense of the bunch. So, knowing the density of them relatively, which one's going to float? If I put solid molecules, liquid molecules, and gas molecules together, which one's going to float to the top, and which one's going to be sinking to the bottom? Please pause the video now and think about it. So, you should have noticed the hotter atoms are, the more they move, and then the more they'll end up spreading out. So, gases. They're the most spread out. They will float above liquids, which are a little bit more condensed, and then the solids will be at the bottom because they aren't spread out at all. Okay. So that's why something that is hotter will float above will float above something that's cold. Because as atoms get hotter, they spread out more. So the hotter something is, the more it'll float above it. So it'll be gas and liquid and solid. Cool. Okay, that's the last thing. Please write a summary about what you learned today and explain to me why does heat rise or consider why does hot air rise. Use density, heat, and atoms in your answer. That's the last thing, everyone. Please take the survey before you go. Thank you so much. Bye.